Welcome to the talk show, Life Stories with Mark Hoberman. The goal of this show is to provide a learning experience to people of all ages, with guests from various fields in academics, a wide range of industries, and insight into the many forms of art, athletics, and entertainment. We hope you enjoy the show. Disney travel show host Jeff Jenkins is today's guest. Jeff will talk about his experiences in entertainment and how he's changing the way people view others. National Geographic travel show host Jeff Jenkins. Welcome to Life Stories with Mark Hoberman. Mark, I'm glad to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, you know, I was in teaching for over 30 years. I would never ask this question of anybody. I love what you do. I love that uh, people who don't know what you do might say, what the heck is Mark asking this question for? But I got to ask you a question, uh, Jeff. Do you consider yourself chubby? Uh, Yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I just... So tell me about, I mean, everything you do is so interesting to me and and the viewers, of course. What was your childhood like? Um, Well, yeah, so it was um, it was it was a good childhood uh, for the most part. Uh, We were we weren't like that, uh, like like well off. At one point we were lower class and then moved up to the middle class uh, throughout my childhood. So like right before I graduated to go to college. That's when, like, I felt like my mom and my stepfather at the time were doing very well for themselves. But yeah, and and but it was it was just good times. Uh, me and my brother always were always outside playing and having a uh, like all of these different adventures. Um, we did have some little rough patches, but it was good times. Excellent. I remember a, a really good childhood. Where where did you go to college? I heard you mention college. A minute. Yeah, Florida A and M University. Oh, excellent. I lived in Florida for two years. I was accepted to the University of South Florida on a clarinet mm-hmm. scholarship. Don't get jealous. It's a big chick magnet, that clarinet. And uh, <laughs> But then uh, things changed, and I, and I moved back to New York, as you can tell by my accent. Uh, so uh, what was your major? Music education. Music education. Do you, uh, do you sing? Do you play an instrument? What, sing. What are... Sing was my principal instrument. Uh, Ex- vocals. vocals were my principal instrument. Excellent. So, you know, when, it, as you know, I'm in education, so I know about, you know, people majoring this and majoring in that, but you go from musical education to not just a journalist, a, a new term to me, a travel journalist. So, mm-hmm. uh, but before we get to that, how did you first get the idea for the Chubby Diaries? Yeah. So Chubby Diaries started from uh, me figuring out what I wanted to do. So I taught for nine years. Um, I, I, my stepfather passed when he passed, it was, it was the moments where I started asking myself the question of like, is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? Um, I ended up leaving there and got into entrepreneurship and, uh, I started a water well project in Rwanda and it was while I was in Rwanda building those wells. I really asked myself the question of like, if money wasn't an option, if whatever it is that I really truly wanted to do, like was to happen for me, what would that be? And it was like, I want to travel the world, help people and get paid to do it. And so I started a, um, I got into content creation and blogging and I needed a niche. And so my niche ended up turning out to be um, like the plight of plus size people traveling. I didn't know that many people in the industry talking about it. And I wanted to just share my experiences because with blogging, that's all you're doing is just sharing your experiences and telling people like, hey, this is what I did today. So it's it's bringing I was just bringing my own perspective and hopefully that it was going to help others. That, that, that's a great philosophy. And, and I have to tell you that, you know, uh, that that opening question about are you chubby? The reason I asked that, of course, because of all that you do and stand for. But uh, I have to tell you that I've worked with so many teens uh, who are not comfortable in their own skin. And I think mm-hmm. you're the poster child for I'm really comfortable and I'm going to thrive in my own skin. So mm-hmm. you talk about you know a plus size person, a person of color. I think that you're you're a beacon of hope. So what is it you'd like some of these other people to, besides the entertainment factor, and it's tremendously entertaining, besides that, what is it you want to bring to the viewers? Yeah, I just want I want people to uh I always tell people like my my mission is not to promote obesity. My mission is to uh to promote 
and motiv- people, motivate people to live life now, no matter their size. Like, um, I, uh, my uncle, he one day told me, he was like, hey, man, why don't you just teach people how to lose weight and then you don't have to do like this, this, this platform. And I was like, well, there's so many other platforms out there that are teaching people how to lose weight. Uh, you can, you can live your best dreams once you get to a certain size. And I was like, I want to talk to the people where they're at right now. Like, and, uh, I think I wanted to humanize this and show people that they they're human and they're having a human experience. Outstanding. You know, and you you talk about the plus size and I know it's, it's also based on, you know, you didn't see many people who looked like you doing mm-hmm. certain kinds of travel, certain not, not the travel that you do. But I have to tell you that the last three plane rides I took, I barely fit into the seat. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing to get the money back from COVID. It feels like they're shrinking. They're shrinking those they're, seats. They must be because I'm the same weight I, I've been the last five years. So it's it's difficult for uh, certain people, certain types of people to do the travel that they do. Now, that, mm-hmm. that one thing is travel. Then there's what you do. So I had a question here that may look disrespectful to someone watches your show. So I have a question for you. Are you out of your mind? Because <laughs> are, are you just, it, why isn't it called crazy? Why isn't it called <laughs> Jeff is out of his mind? I'm, just, just, I'm not the producer. I want you to think about a name change. I saw a video of you <laughs> saying to someone, you want me to climb that? There is no, I wouldn't take a picture of the mountain that you had to climb. I'm so scared of heights. And the first, all you said was OMG. I would have said goodbye. So uh, where have your travels taken you? What have you learned? Tell the, the viewers what you've done. I'm sure they'll, they'll, some of them have seen the show. They're going to see the show. But this is, this is exciting, but it's not normal. It's exciting. Yeah. It's wonderful. I should be charged for vacation just watching you go on vacation. That works for me. So, so where have you gone? What have you done? Tell us some of the craziness. Well, yeah, my adventures have taken me all over the world, um, um, especially for the show. I've, I've been to 45 countries uh, in general, um, but uh, for the show, we went to New Zealand and um, Vietnam, Japan, Brazil, Argentina. And like you were saying, I actually was watching that episode last night. I don't, I don't watch it as much. And it was uh it was on and i was like oh man let me just watch it but yeah he's he's talking about me climbing a um a rock cliff uh rock face uh with just my hands and feet i was like safety like i had the safety ropes on but it was all me and uh yeah my adventures take me to where i'm like doing white water rafting down a waterfall in new zealand uh doing a sumo wrestling match with a former world champion uh sumo wrestler uh, climbing uh, or walking across a suspension bridge uh, over a mile in the sky in Vietnam. So it's just like me doing all these like crazy adventures that for, for me is like me pushing myself, pushing my boundaries, doing some bucket list things. But then also like, what are some of those things that I've seen other people do that I never thought I could do? And I was like, well, shoot, if we can make it happen, let's make it happen. Let's try it. Because that's all I was all about is just, motivating and being that representation to show people like, hey, you can get out here and do it too. Yeah, what, what a great message. But I have to tell you, you talk about the safety ropes. I saw the mountain and for me to wear those safety ropes, I'd need a contract by God saying, Mark, you were safe. So you are a trusting individual because you get into these white, now I've gone white water rafting, but you would consider it a bathtub compared to what you did. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> flying out, I mean, it's just it's just some crazy stuff. So I have to tell you that, Jeff, on my show, I often talk about the story behind the glory. So Mm -hmm. I want to get into a lot about you and then the places you visit. And I want to come back, circle back to Rwanda. What struggles did you have to overcome as you found success on your show and in your industry? Um, I I would say how fickle some of this stuff is. Uh, Right now, we're we're in the industry has been going through a lot of uh, budget cuts and just the strikes all happening at the same time. Uh, unfortunately, and fortunately, my show came out during all of this. Um, and so a lot of times it's it's a lot of, um, I mean, there's already uh, ambiguity, but now it's just a whole bunch more, you know? And so uh, there's, there's a lot of like green light freezes. So uh, they aren't like, 
pushing out shows. So for me, I'm a type A person. Uh, I like to know what I'm doing months ahead. And so to, to not know what's happening uh, in the industry or what's happening uh, is the thing that has been like, like, I guess, challenging for me uh, personally and, uh, and, and for a lot of my friends. Right. So, so yeah, the industry itself is tough. So uh, we're missing a piece here because you have this dream of, hey, if someone who looks like me can do this, mm -hmm. then I want to show other people they can do this. And I know you talk a tremendous amount about getting out of your comfort zone. And this is such an important concept because there are people in, in industry and in, in corporations who are brilliant, but they can't get out of their comfort zone and present it to even four people in a conference room. So, you know, you go to the end extreme and when you talk about comf comfort zones, but how do we get from the thought process of, hey, if I can do this, others can, to that phone call from a Disney, from a National Geographic to say, hey, we like what you're doing. What were those steps like? Well, yeah, I mean, well, I started, I mean, that, so the theme of the show is called, or, or is Life Begins Where Your Comfort Zone Ends. And that's that's the my one of my life's mottos. I learned that um, back 17 years ago when I went on my first plane ride to Japan at 20. Um, it was is so to me, it's been something that I've been like constantly growing. Like, how do I step outside of my comfort zone even more like through the years? So it's not it, so it might look like I've done it like overnight, but it wasn't an overnight thing. This is like. 17 years of me doing this consistently. And so when Nat Geo did reach out, like I was already preparing myself. Mm -hmm. And even at that time, so three, four or five years ago, when I first started Chubby Diaries, I was already in this place of like, hey, I'm going to have a TV show one day. Like that's what I literally wrote down every single day. So I was already putting myself in that mindset of being able to have that TV show um, and then making myself uncomfortable, thinking about the things that come while you're doing the show and thinking about the things that come after the show. And so the one thing that I, I would just tell people and challenge people is where, because everybody's comfort zone is different. Everybody's comfort zone is subjective. Uh, and so you got to ask yourself the question of like, okay, where's my comfort zone? And like, how do I step myself out of my comfort zone? Little by little, you don't have to be as extreme as I am, but I do know people that are way more extreme to me, you know? And so uh, that's why I'm like, man, my comfort zone might not be your comfort zone or what I think is like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Uh, somebody else is like, oh, this is just another Tuesday. Right. Well, first of all, you say you have people who, who are more extreme than you. I don't want to meet them because I get a heart attack just watching what you do. So that that's that's incredible. But uh, I love this out of your comfort zone. But let's talk about the definition of what a diary is. A diary, by definition, is really a personal ex a written experience. So where did Chubby Diaries eventually go and what feedback did you get? And how did that feedback kind of inform what you did after that? Well, yeah. So with Chubby Diaries, like it, it was... It was it was once again me sharing my story of uh, being a plus size black man traveling around the world. And uh, it was met with a, a lot of uh, not just acclaim, but more so just like it resonated with a lot of people. And it resonated in a way that I didn't think that it would, um, because I thought that the experiences that I was having, that it was like it was just it was isolated. It was just me. And come to find out, no, there's a lot of people who've had this experience or even just like um, and I and I found out that it didn't just happen to plus size people. But uh, in Thailand, uh, I've, I've met and talked to multiple plus size people who legs have fell through like 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 weak wood that might be on a deck or somewhere in Thailand or Southeast Asia. And I remember that happened to me. And I was just randomly at a bar hanging out with my friends. Uh, it was a daytime and my leg went straight through the, uh, through the floor. And so like to know that other people have had that experience, uh, it just, it just brought light to like, feeling guilt or feeling shame or it empowers you when you say, hey, I did this, but this is how I overcame it. Uh, that empowerment lies in that. Well, em empowerment is, uh, again, a great message and so important. But I want to turn back the clock 
and, and mm-hmm. find out what led to your trip to Rwanda, what experience did you see, what can you tell us and young people watching especially about what we take for granted? Because a lot of people don't realize when they talk about water and things like that, that, mm-hmm. you know, you can't just walk over to the fridge so easily. So what were the things you saw that, that, that horrified you, that saddened you, and then what did you do to make those lives better? Yeah, so uh, I went on a mission trip. So right when I uh, stopped teaching, uh, I went on a mission trip that uh, summer, the end of the summer, to Rwanda to go build keyhole gardens. And it was while we were building those keyhole gardens in Kajeo, Rwanda, me and a group of my friends, we came back that was on the trip with me. And we was like, hey, man, these people need water. And, And the reason we even thought that was because, one, uh, the main reason we went over the first time was to to help with the gardens, but if they didn't have like reliable sources of water uh, or they didn't have water for themselves to drink. Why would I feed the plants? You know, it, it kept being one of those things where they had to make a decision. Do I drink or do I feed the plants? You know, and and then we even saw it to where even where kids were drinking out of was some of the same water that that the cows and the goats were drinking out of, or, you know, cows, sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll use the bathroom right there at the thing. So you're talking about feces and urine being able to go into that water source, or they have the jerry cans and they have to walk uh, for like a mile or so with the, with this massive jerry can, uh, which are the jerry cans are those big yellow, uh, like jugs that, that you might see, uh, in in a lot of under underdeveloped countries and so yeah so it was like man we got to do something and none of us none of us uh that that started this project were engineers i didn't even know how water came out of the ground so the fact that we were able to go there like it just took us just committing like all right we're just going to commit to this and we've seen what we've seen so we're going to commit to it that it we figured it out you know, and so we even found an organization that was doing exactly what we wanted to do. And that, and all their whole job was, was to train other people to do and how to build wells. And so the fact that we were able to do that, that's what gave me the even the encouragement to keep doing or to even pursue uh, the career of travel. Well, you know, giving back to others is definitely, you know, so important. It gives you such a good feeling, as you know. And now you've taken this further, but what kind of feedback have you gotten from plus-size people or people of color or people who, for whatever reason, felt they couldn't do certain travel arrangements the way you did? They couldn't do certain trips the way you did. What kind of feedback did you get? I'm sure that that fuels you even more. Yeah, I get a gambit of feedback. Like, it's it's it's... It's always different. So, I mean, people, I mean, I've, I've heard people say like, like how inspired they are by what I'm doing or, hey, uh, I remember episode two of your show. I watched that episode. One of the challenges in there was like to go sumo wrestling, but I had to take off my shirt. You had to do a shirtless. And that was, I've never taken my shirt off in public. And even to think that one day this show could be, uh, presented to millions of people, uh, I was very hesitant to do it. And so the fact that I did take it off inspired other people to be like, you know what? I'm not going to allow um, shame or how how people may think of me. I'm going to take my shirt off. This is the first time I ever took my shirt off in 20 years, you know? So it's, it's, it's stories like that that have been very encouraging. Uh, people getting out of their own mindsets or just their own thoughts about like, Oh, I can't do that, but you know what? I can do it now. I didn't even I didn't even know that scuba diving was uh, an option. So now I'm going to add it to my bucket list because mm-hmm. uh, I, I do a lot of scuba diving. And so, so to see people see their paradigm shifts like change, like it's 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 one of those things that um, is has been very cool to see. Oh, yeah. And again, it's all about stepping out of your comfort zone. But again, you talk mm-hmm. about being shamed as fat shaming. We're in such a uh, a society now where there's so much judgment on looks and things of that nature. And I can tell you that it's tremendously harmed uh, the teen community, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. uh, bullying way up, teen suicide way up. So what advice would you give to a young person who is struggling as uh, they work towards their passion or just struggling out of bed and just 
you know, I think that you have so much you can offer. What advice would you give to teens holistically? You know, I would say this. I loved how some of the most successful people that I've been studying and being around and stuff like that, I found out very quickly that almost all of them have affirmations um, and uh, and they find ways to be encouraged. And, and there's, there's one stating, stating, uh, statement that says uh, motivation and encouragement is like a shower. You need it every day, you know? So it's like, you need encouragement. And a lot of times you think people are willing to step up on their own and they're not. So I, I recommend people finding ways to be motivated and encouraged daily. Uh, find people like myself and others that are on like social media, find ways to affirm who you are, what you look like, and to not fall into the trap of Oh, like, look at all these haters and things like that. Like, don't get caught up in like what the haters are doing or saying about you. Uh, but it's tough. It's really tough, and especially if you think that that's the only thing. Um, I know speaking up sometimes also helps. Um, I used to, I used to, one thing is like uh, for me, because I used to be a high school choir teacher and stuff like that. So I would be in high school. So I used to always see this stuff. I learned very quickly, like, if you can just, eliminate well because a lot of times especially if you're like plus size if you just automatically be like what are you gonna tell me i'm, I'm plus size you're gonna tell me i'm fat like that, that is that whole combo like they just stop you know and so um it's 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 sometimes though it takes some of those measures to tell people to just like just to mind their business but to also just be yourself uh i'm learning even as adults that's one thing that i've learned from a lot of adults that have seen my progression have seen my success is that they like, man, Jeff, it looks like you're just being you and not trying to be somebody else. And in, in return of you being you, the success continues to just grow. And that's one thing that I'm learning about myself. Just continue to be me. There's something about me that um, that it, it can be a benefit to the world. Let me continue to hone into that. I have superpowers. So instead of worrying about the things or trying to make myself more well-rounded, how about I just work on the superpowers that I have instead of trying to do everything else? And so that's what I, I truly, truly work towards. Well, what, what great what advice. Do. Yeah. What great advice. I love the fact that you, you taught others in the classroom. Now you're teaching others on a much more grand scale. But I, I, I want to uh, thank you so much for sharing all that information and your story. But I got to ask a little gossip. So we see what goes right on the show. Can you walk us through some things that were edited and that things that didn't go so well on the show to fall out of the boat? Did you hit your head on, on the rock? Because I refuse to believe. I mean, I, I almost got injured watching you. So let's hear let's hear. Uh, a quick story about that, if we can, in closing. Well, you know, I, I would say that, like, um, there were, I would say, a lot of stuff. It wasn't that it wasn't edited. It just wasn't, it didn't even make it in, you right. know, is what it was. So we, we're talking, trying to fit hours upon hours, hundreds of hours per episode Ooh. into 44 minutes is really, really tough. So a lot of that stuff just didn't even make it in. So you didn't get to see all of the the climbing and the, the hikes that you had to do. I'm over there about to die because I'm like, not only did you, I already had to hike in to get to this waterfall. I had to do all that crazy adventures while I was there. And then we got to do that same trip back out that takes 45 to an hour just to get back out. So you're talking about how miserable that part is. Um, when I did the, the white water kayaking, um, I, they edited it in a way to where, I mean, they, they, they edited it to show that it still was severe, but they didn't put everything in it. And that was one of the times where I, I thought I was a goner. Like I thought that was, I thought that was, I was, I was, un, I was unalive. I thought I was going to be unalive. Um, and so, yeah, it's, um, it was, it was that, and that, that scene was very traumatic for me. Uh, I think people even bring it up. I think about it often. Um, but it was like, it was like I was like drowning. I had this massive bruise on my thigh. I didn't even know bruises can get that big, and they do. Uh, I've seen it, uh, and it was just, it was just, uh, it was a lot. So it, it's, 
it's some things that from the show that you've seen, everything that I did, there was no edits in the sense of like what I did is always the stuff that was leading up to it. Right. Or we just took a venture out that just didn't even make it into the show. So you wouldn't even know if it was there or not. Got it. Got it. Well, I'm so glad that you're safe. Let me just say quickly to the viewers uh, to not forget to watch us on E360 TV available on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. EST, available on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire. Remember to follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Jeff Jenkins, thank you so much for all that you shared with us today. Mark, this has been a fantastic time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for watching Life Stories with Mark Hoberman. To contact Mark, email him at info at lifestorieswithmarkhoberman.com or visit him on social media through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn. Thank you for watching Life Stories with Mark Hoberman.